Hi, friends. This is Real Talk with Real Moms. I'm Darcy. I'm Lindsay. I'm Alma. And as always, we are unrehearsed, unscripted. We are open books, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to get into some... Yeah, we're going to get into some, I think, I think like heated, not not as heated necessarily, but conversations that are talked about that are pretty heated on a regular basis when it comes Probably to our it. most controversial episode. Yeah. yeah. Which is yeah. bizarre. I'm sure we'll have more, but today it's definitely be, going to be controversial. Oh, yeah. We kind of compared notes a little bit before we like actually started recording. And it's honestly uncanny how we're pretty all pretty similar. In, yeah. our, in our journeys Crazy, right yeah so uh this will be a fun one to also you know stretch out and maybe find somebody who was on the opposite side i for sure want someone who was on the opposite side to come on as a guest so um because i I'll, i'm pretty like neutral with a lot of things because i'm like teach their own but there are a few things that i i am kind of firm in and i would love for somebody on the opposite end who is also firm um to like um, educate me and explain themselves because I'm also the kind of person that like if you can make it make sense to me like I have no problem being like ooh that I was wrong or like I can see your Absolutely. side now so I, I'm yeah. into that so yeah so I didn't see where this goes that is exciting okay so um how long did you all did you all breastfeed yeah, yeah so today we're talking about how we fed our children oh right and so right. no yeah yeah you know how like you know because from the beginning, everyone chooses a different path. So we want to talk about how we fed our, how you feed our baby, how people feed their babies mm-hmm. and what choices they make. And again, we're all very similar in our journey. Yeah. yeah. So um, did you all breastfeed or did you go right to formula feeding from the very beginning? Um, I tried, I breastfeeding. tried breastfeeding with my first and then I went direct to formula feeding with my second. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I also so I breastfed. Sex. Yeah. Um, going into my journey, I was never somebody who was like a very I, firm, my child needs to be breastfed for this. Not, I, it was never that for me. I was like, I'll try it. And like, I really, really, truly thought I was, I was so naive. I didn't even put bottles on my registry because I was like, I'm 31 weeks pregnant and I'm already producing milk. Yeah. I'm going to be just fine. Yeah. Right. I thought, right. oh, I'll be just fine. No issues. Um, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Um, do you want me to tell my, my story? Yeah, go for it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, let's just talk about issues that we had. Yeah, what were some of your yeah. issues? So um, latching was a disaster. I have flat nipples um, and we tried everything. We tried, uh, like, actually, I lied because there was one left, one last thing left to try, but it also got to the point where, like, my lactation consultant looked at my nipples and actually said, Oh, you poor honey. They were that mm-hmm. cracked, that bleeding, oh that scabbed. Oh, and um, the first thing that happened, Gia was spitting up blood. I'm like, Oh my God, is it her blood or my blood? We rushed the pediatrician. Luckily, it was only my blood. <laughs> um, right, but still, like, bless your heart. Yeah, right. It was frightening. Um, and then, like, well, also, the out. next thing that yeah. happened was that she, Every single time she would eat, you know how like you're supposed to be on that three hour schedule in the beginning where you'd eat, they'd go down for a nap and then uh, they get back up and they do a little free time or whatever. Well, my issue was that she would eat. It would take a half hour to 45 minutes to eat, which is standard or whatever. But then it would take an hour and a half for her to settle down. Like literally she would be like screaming pains, like arching her back, everything like the works. Well, come to find out my daughter, um, she suffered from a soy and dairy dairy allergy. And then because of that, she was getting a lot of acid reflux. So yeah, so like we got her tested and like, she actually like, she had blood in her stool and, and it was, it was pretty intense. Like they said, Oh, don't worry. Save that milk you're pumping because you'll be able to give it to her between six and nine months. She'll grow out of it. She'll grow out of it. Well, come to find out, my daughter did not grow out of her dairy and soy allergy until she was 19 months old. Oh, so wow. Two years old. Wow. Yeah. Um, so my daughter really, she really took it and ran with it. Like she really, she <laughs> <laughs> held on tight. Um, 
There was one last thing that I could have tried, but at that point we had already found out that she had the dairy and soy allergy. So why would I keep pumping milk? Um, totally. I ordered a smaller phalange, which like, the, I think like the average phalange was like 22. And I did some research and like they said for um, flattenables, like you would want to order like a 10 millimeter phalange for your pump, for your machine. Oh, okay. so I ordered them. They came in and literally that same, like two days prior i had found out that like she had had the dairy allergy so i'm like why would i do that to me i actually started hand pumping like with instead of using my like pumper i oh, would yeah, yeah. Pump because well, that's a workout well mm -hmm. i i made so much milk that it basically came out on its own okay it wasn't, like once i got it going it was okay but i i did a lot of hand expressing in, in the shower too like yes, it was a lot of milk a wasted, yeah. but it was a lot more comfortable than clamping on a pump and like right so no I, I i didn't produce anything so i was the complete opposite of you so it was a workout to get like yeah mm -hmm. uh, so i was laughing right before we hopped on this recording though because i was gonna say my daughter is just like her mother she has very expensive taste and so she's been eating very expensive formula since the get-go like oh my the cans gosh, yeah. are like ridiculous like in like when people were like oh you poor honey or oh i'm so sad that she like couldn't breastfeed or whatever i would just be like oh yeah she just has expensive taste <laughs> <laughs> well so when did you stop Lindsay? how was yeah she, when you stopped how old five weeks old five weeks um, old. and i pumped for like two weeks after that just so that i because i did i there was I well, mean, we should tell everybody that you just got rid of that milk yeah 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 um, you have to pump so you're not miserable right you don't well, want to be engorged. I, I, I got mastitis too i had right, yeah i was gonna say that like flu like symptoms like spiked um temperature everything like i don't did you guys have mass at mass at, I so it, it feels like and it was yeah. awful it feels like you have the flu like i actually went and like my boobs were so big so like i have normally a size d and when i was breastfeeding i was well into like g whoa so g for g when you get mastitis, Lindsay, you don't have they, implants, right? You have natural D's. Oh, I have natural D's. So yeah. I have, have get like a, I, I have implants. Like a, mm, I, I have say, implants. Yeah. So when mine swelled up and got like rock hard, like I felt like my implant was almost like so squished that it was square. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so wait, you might have had the same issue though. Because like, it was like a box right here. With the mastitis, they were saying, look for a hot red line. Like that's how you, you declare your yeah. mastitis but my boobs were so big that i couldn't see the line so like that was supposed to be like your first like notification that you have it but i couldn't see it because i could like my boobs so were big. like yeah so so yeah that's my journey so what about you guys i know that you probably both have something close to well, alma, you i want to hear yours alma because you breastfed you tried to breastfeed with your first one, and then you didn't even try. You switched straight to formula, right? Yeah. So 100%. did your did your first experience, I guess, have an effect on how you started the second one? Absolutely. So when I so I had I had my son. He was he was like two and a half three weeks early, and um, I was like, we're gonna nurse. It's gonna be great, you know. Um, like I said, I do have implants, but I didn't have any. Um, they didn't take off my nipple or anything I hadn't done from underneath. So the doctor's like, don't worry, you're going to be able to breastfeed, like not a problem. Um, and so my milk, I had trouble since he was early, my milk was not coming in. Like I wasn't, Lindsay started really, really early producing. Yeah. And so um, I, we kept trying and pumping and trying to pull it through. And when it finally did come in where I felt like I was going to like gush out milk because my breasts were so engorged, like they were like to my chin, I swear to God. Yeah. yeah. Um, like three droplets would come out. And so with lactation consultants and the cookies and the teas and like everything that happened, I was nursing from both and then supplementing with formula toward the end because I had a nine and a half pound child. My child ate an extreme hungry. amount. Yeah, he was hungry. And so um, I couldn't, I tried for almost three months to try to like do that. And it was so stressful and I was becoming so depressed and not because I couldn't nurse, but because my body was so exhausted of like putting itself through so much stress for like less than an ounce of milk through from both breasts. Yeah. And I would be like, it's important. We're going to feed it to him. And then 
I'll formula feed the rest. And Jake had reflux as well, like Gia, not from any allergies though. Um, it just, he had it. So he was on Zantac. I don't know if they put Gia on Zantac when she was vomiting. You know funny? Like it didn't help her. It actually made it worse. Oh, wow. No, Zantac helped us in the pain part, but not in like the vomit part. So my son, if you look at all his pictures, he lived in matching bibs Aww. to all his outfits because there was always vomit everywhere. So I just had like bibs everywhere. But like I went, I, I told myself, I was like this, the way I mentally feel is not worth the stress. And they told me that like, some people just don't produce. And the lactation consultant was like, you're in the case where you may not produce. You can try to feed the tiny bit that you get. Or you can take a decongestant and be done. She was very supportive in that. And I was like, done. I'm done. I took Sudafed and it dried me up pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. I tried the cabbage leaf thing, but that didn't work as well. But she goes, a decongestant will just like, like suck you up. And how old was Jacob when he stopped? <sighs> Almost three months. Okay. Oh, and so you, oh, so you really, like, yeah, I tried. Like, like, I, yeah. Like, because I didn't have any like allergies or anything like that. I basically told myself, I was like, it'll come, it'll come. And it yeah. just never came. And so they told me that, I, that, you know, sometimes the second is different, that I may produce milk with the second, but the way that I felt during that time, I didn't want to feel that way again. I didn't want to yeah. feel, um, I don't know, I, I don't want to call it failure because I didn't feel any fail. I feel, felt like I gave it a fair shot, but I just didn't, I, it was the most terrible feeling. And I didn't want to feel sad like that because it was causing me to go into major postpartum depression when that happened. So I was like, I'm not doing this again. And so the nurses are like, are you nursing? And I'm like, nope, bring in the bottle. Absolutely not. No, bring in the bottle. And you know what? Both my kids have incredible immune systems. I can't even, I can't complain. They were fed, they were happy. And that's really all that matters to me. Well, I think we've gotten into a, a place in society where everyone feels fed is best. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure there are still some people there, that yeah, there are still some people. Right. And, and I, I feel never like- felt pressure from like the nurses or anybody like in the hospital. And like my fat, like my, I made it very clear to my family, like this is what I was going to do. And nobody, I was very grateful that nobody in like my direct family made a big deal about it. Um, I did get questions about it, obviously from other moms as, as it happened. But my answer was, this is what I choose. Like, I'm not, yeah, no judgment. No, you I will, I will agree with you there. I've, felt a, like I felt I had to justify myself and like had to be like well my daughter's got blood in her shit so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we're not gonna go there and like it still was like well did you try to cut this out did you try to cut that out and I'm like I literally was eating nothing I was down to like several things that didn't have dairy and didn't have soy and my, which is my hard in that sense it's hard so restricted that like well, what about all the things like Alma mentioned like cookies or you can drink a beer you can no, you know, do, do this pumping no but she she well, those are all the things I had to stay away from because I had to stay away from gluten I had to stay away from right. soy I had to stay away from dairy I had to, like I had to cut all those things out of me because they were being translated onto her yeah. you know yeah. what's funny is that my I have a relative who the one that I told you guys I'm going to try to get her on um um, she was very natural. She does like natural home births and things like that. Um, but her daughter was dairy gluten. So I, so she was on goat's milk, which was, wow. she couldn't even do the formula. Like it was insane. Oh, wow. She, or, yeah. I mean, her son, so yeah. how old was that? Cause she could have probably done what Gia had, which was new, new tramogen. No, it was like very hard on him. And she, plus she does like a very natural, she's a, like very clean, not like natural person. Yeah. Um, so they chose yeah, the goat's milk and she, like she has like a, she had like a, for, like a home, I don't want to call it like a homemade formula because that sounds weird, but it basically was like a homemade, like. No, I, homemade I know people who did that, um, yeah. not because of, of allergies, but because they just thought it was the best for their kid. Like I've seen hemp. I think that's partially why she did it as well. Yeah. Like versus like a powdered formula, like her, her, not her more natural yeah. option was that. The good yeah. news is, is my kid's not allergic to anything anymore because I've shoved it all in her face to make sure there's no peanut allergies, no grass allergies. Like I'm literally yeah, like, you. you're not getting any more allergies. You're done. Like you did it for two years and now you get nothing. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. Yeah. But you know, Alma, you also mentioned like that you felt like or that you didn't feel like a failure, but you threw that word out there. And I think that's so common. Like as women, we feel like that's what we're meant to do. So when we can't do it, I think a lot of women feel like they've failed or like a failure or 
Um, oh yeah. And it's I not, definitely I like did. And, and not even that, I feel like you don't necessarily feel that way, but I feel like other people make you feel that or way. You, or you think other people think that about you. Like it's one of those right. things where it's just the way our society is, you know? I well, and that, that's like a that's failure that then I, to well, my husband can get up and feed the kid now. So it like, um, and it helped a lot that he was able to yes. do that. I felt more like a failure than I am- ever imagined my postpartum self feeling after not being able to breastfeed it because it, I never had like any like oh my god I'm gonna breastfeed for the whole first year of Gia's life right. so like when right. I did have to give it up like me and my pediatric nurse sat in the in the room and cried together Aww. and I never imagined I'd be that person and it's she a very emotional she, thing well she looked at me and she said I never do this like this is not something I don't cry with other people like this is the first time I've sat and cried with somebody well, she sounds going amazing. through this and I think it's because she knew I had no expectations. She knew I was literally just trying to survive, but that it, it sparked some sort of emotion for me. Well, well yeah, I feel like tough. in the end, it is survival. Like I have friends who nurse beautifully and they nurse the entire pregnancy and it's great. I'm like literally them. getting like, like right now Aww. about it. Oh, I'm sorry. She is about to be too. Mom hormones. Yeah, oh, no my. kidding. Though. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. But I mean, like that is the kind of support that you're looking for when you are going through something like that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, and I, and I think that more people need to just, instead of like voicing their, did you take this out? Do you not eating that? Like, instead of being like, okay, I support your choice. Yeah. And I think that's the important part. Yeah. I was just about to say that Alma, I know people mean so well. And I think, I feel like we say this every episode, people mean well, but right. um, right. like asking about when you're gonna have a baby and stuff. But, you know, I do remember when I was, at that point where like, I didn't know how much longer I could go on breastfeeding because I wasn't producing, you know, I have like two friends who are very pro breastfeeding suggesting. So uh, Dar, your, your issue was, was that you just couldn't produce. Was yeah. Like, so she was that you were having at, issues. Okay. Yeah. So she was born at 36 weeks and I, have you guys ever heard of S and S feeding? No, no. Okay. So that's what I had to do with Kennedy. Okay. So she was born and she latched perfectly if we had no problems with latching it was um i've heard that that's a huge nightmare because if you know it's it's i had it's, issues with yeah yeah I, I heard that's really common and so i what i remember being super relieved that she latched perfectly and everything um but because it was so early like she wasn't getting anything right and um because she was so early you know they were i i did think that like breast fed milk would be like the best for her. So I, I was pumping, but you know, when you have like no milk, or, but you want to produce milk and you know, it's going to come in like when they're so early, you can, um, do S and S, which is what we did. And uh, we, what and it's really simple. For? All it is, is you put formula in a little bitty bottle and you, uh, you know, clip it onto your bra okay. and then, oh, you okay. Okay. Layer, and then you tape it down your, you know, boob, and then you put the little bitty suck, sucky thing right on your nipple. So when Kennedy was latched, she got my nipple and the tube where the milk was coming out. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it would stimulate when she was, you know, sucking well, so I my feel nipple. like you really tried really hard. Yes. Well, here's, so, you know, the three hour schedule and stuff that you were saying, yeah. well, at 36 weeks, she was on a two hour feeding schedule. So, and you know, the, the feeding time starts from like, um, when they're done, I always thought it started from when, when they s- start, but like right. when she was done, she would take about 30, 40 minutes. Cause again, I, I you know, I, she wasn't getting a lot and the, she was getting it. She was having a second through a tube. And, um, so she would do that for like 30, 40 minutes. Then we'd put her down and then, um, in bed, and then we would clean the, st- you know, clean the S and S equipment. Yeah. And, um, then I'd pump cause I had to, stimulate my breasts. And so for about three or four weeks, and I just don't even know how I survived this when we would, because Paul got up and helped me because I had to tape everything. And so he got up and helped me every time. By the time we laid down, I had set my alarm for 20 minutes before I had to wake her up to do it again. And so I think that had a, like had a big, contributed a lot to my postpartum depression and stuff because I was just so tired. And so, like I said, I was, I mean, it was just crazy to me. I was, so she, but, but whenever, so anyway, so I did that for a, you know, I probably did that for like two or three weeks. And, um, at my 
two week appointment follow up, you know, um, her doctor was encouraging and the nurses were great and everything. And again, I was a new mom and I just like wanted to breastfeed. I, I mean, I, I was okay with formula. Cause Absolutely, we, had to, yeah. we had to immediately, I knew, I mean, they told me before I gave birth to her, they're like, she's so early. Are you okay with form- substituting formula? You know, if she needs to. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like I definitely was into feeding her however it was possible, but I really wanted to try to breastfeed. And, but I'm like you, Alma, if I were to have a second one, which I'm not, um, I would, I wouldn't even try. I would go straight to formula. Um, and so, so we, after, I think probably like at the sixth week, um, I was just done. I wasn't getting anything. Like I would pump I, I, 24 hours of like pumping and doing all those things. I'd get like five ounces. <laughs> so, uh, I just stopped. We stopped and my, the nurse was like, I feel you know, yeah. well, she, and she was so sweet. She was like, now is that you know, three weeks you said? It was like five or six weeks when we okay. got stopped. Like yeah, I, I, I had a breaking. Yeah, yeah. Get and so two ounces, and it was it, it was like well, it's yeah. just exhausting. And but it thankfully, I didn't have. I wasn't really producing enough, so I was able to quit cold turkey. Like I didn't have to take any medicine. I just like so nice. stopped, and well, I was fine. I didn't have any problems. So I don't think I w- had postpartum depression. I had. I was on the brink of postpartum anxiety. I was okay, so. Yeah anxious. Literally, mm-hmm. you guys, I cried every time it was about to time to feed because my nipples hurt so bad that she, and she'd have to latch. And it just, it, it I, I, I was like, we have to do this again. And cl- like similar to Darcy, because Gia had the issue with the soy and allergy or dairy that as soon as we'd finally get her to sleep, then I wouldn't sleep. Yeah. And so, and then we'd have to wake her back up. Mm-hmm. I'd be lucky if it was an hour that I have to like that. I got her settled. Mm-hmm. between you know so like she got an hour of sleep I got like you said 20 minutes of sleep yeah. and then we had to do it all over again and the best thing that happened was the time that we started formula feeding can you guys hear the wind am I the wind is like whipping right oh. now in, in the back no I can hear it um but the best like literally week five when I found out I'm done breastfeeding and I just have to wean and John took over night feedings and I'd go pump while he was night feeding. Oh and yeah. And so it, we would take the same amount of time to night feed, but she would go right back to sleep. And then I get to go to sleep full. instead yeah. of like having to, and like, I also didn't have to get up for like every single night feed. I could probably like pump at, at five weeks, maybe once or twice in the middle of the night where she was still eating three times a night. Right. Which was nice because I love the whole sleep on the baby sleeps because uh that doesn't happen. That doesn't like, happen. No, no at all. So, yeah. Um oh, he took over yeah. because he just was he he's the kind of person who could literally like he probably fed her in his sleep, honestly. Like I wish I, I was up. You guys know I don't sleep and like so for him to take over that was like literally how I think I was on the cusp. I was like literally tipping into postpartum anxiety and I'm pretty sure like it reeled me back I think getting the just a good amount of sleep or like a decent amount of sleep is so important and I think that plays a huge contribute to postpartum depression oh a thousand percent. I mean I think like if, if you know and that's something that like it's so hard to like to me it's like you know I don't know I just remember being like I can't believe I can't believe pe- new moms function because I knew I wasn't the only mom that did SNS right. Oh, by the way, when I was talking to my doctor, that when I went for my follow up, I told her that you know the pediatrician had recommended SMS. So Paul and I were having to get up in the middle of the night and do SMS, which is you know. And she was like, like "Why are you telling me about your sexual?" You no, know, she was like, "Oh, okay." And I was like, you know, and she, and, you know, I was like, so you know, like, this is only your two week of you She's like, like, "Oh," and she was like, "What? How is that?" I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sure how that relates. And I'm like, I don't know. It's supposed to, you know, because, you, know, you know, it stimulates my breast. She's oh like, oh my God, that is so. Okay. And then I'm like, and then, you know, she's like, you know, I almost, I, it's clicking now. Do you mean S and S? And I was like, yes, yes. We are, yes. Oh my, God. Oh, yes. my health yes. is shaking right now. Literally my ring light is shaking from this wind. I cannot believe you guys can't hear it. Are no, I can't. Hear. Are you guys gonna have a storm? Uh, we're having cold weather coming in, so oh, okay. like, it, like right now, I think the wind gusts are like sixty miles an hour. Ooh. Um, yeah, but anyways, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, 
I, uh, we weren't doing SMS. We were doing SNS. But, um, but yeah. So, Honestly, uh, when you first said it, I was like, that's just really just Paul and Darcy. I'm yeah. thinking SMS. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they are doing that. <laughs> we're not. So. Never um, mind. It was like your two week appointment or something. And they don't even oh, like. Right. Yeah. Like, you cannot like, have sex. And until. then, you know, she's like, I wonder why, how that, you know, what that has to do, how that relates. And I'm like, well, you know, it's similar to my breast. And she's, she's like, think well, I guess so. in, there's other ways you could probably do that as opposed to, you know, anyways. Um, but yeah, that was my thing. What, like Alma said with people suggesting things that I'm like going to switch gears here because I'm thinking about sex. Um, <laughs> that, uh, you know, I just had a, a few friends and I think that's great that people are pro breastfeeding, but I feel like that's almost something like if you, if you're passionate about it, like put it up on like your Facebook or something like that, like go find a breastfeeding page. But like, you know, I just remember trying, I, I wanted to quit like at three or four weeks. It went longer because I had a few friends who were just like, and they were so sweet and encouraging, but like, they just made me feel like I needed to keep trying. But so I would see your struggle either. They don't see you right. at midnight crying, literally tears oh. streaming down your face as your kids trying right. to either latch or trying to, you know, you're taping this. Like they don't see that you're literally breaking right. down. Well, right. and that's a thing. Like some people have very smooth experiences experiences oh, with it. God. Like some people have beautiful, smooth experiences with it and some don't. Just like anything in life, like everybody just needs to be like, okay, you tried, you got well, it. Yeah. Some people say like it connects right. them with their baby. It was just connecting us. I was like, what? I mean, like, yeah. I can't feed you. Like, I mean, it was, I it was really kind of like a People who had great experiences, but also like, I want to be like, you're being so rude right now. By like trying to shove your great experience and telling me, just wait three more weeks. It'll be fine if you wait three more weeks. And or like just wait five more weeks. It was six, it was the sixth week that really hit it for me. And it's like, yeah. I mean, I have a girlfriend who had a great experience, uh, terrible with her first and her with her second. She nursed beautifully the entire way. Good for her. I chose not to. My choice. Good for her for trying. Cause yeah, yeah I, good for her I, for trying again because her first was so terrible that I am surprised that she tried for the second. But she it was great the second time around. And, and it was because of because of allergies. Her first daughter was because of allergies. Yeah, and, and like her, I will try again, but it'll be to be honest with you, I'll probably only go as far as I did for Gia because my first of all, my kid's doing great. Second of all, like I'm not gonna yeah. I feel like being a mom in my sense is I want to do as much like as I can for both. Like, so I'll give that same nutrition that I did to Gia because that's the kind of mom there's not, no one gets more than the other in this family. Okay. Right. Right. You guys are almost all that equality. <laughs> okay. No, but seriously. And like the other thing too, is I wish that more people talked about how hard breastfeeding was. The only people who are speaking up are the ones who talk about how great it is and how much you have to do it rather than the people who are like, it's really freaking hard and it's yeah. okay. It's okay. Well, they release you. Then th- th- I think that's my biggest complaint. They release you from the hospital. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like you don't know what you're doing. You have some, so if you have a C-section, you have the privilege of staying a little bit longer and maybe having one of the lactation nurses come in. Like a lot of people don't know that there's people out there to help. I wish I a lot of people don't that. know that, that it's a struggle for a lot of people. They just send you on your merry way with this brand new baby. You don't know what the hell to do with it. And you're supposed to know everything. If, as far as how to nurse them, do they have colic? Like, why are they crying? They don't talk. They they don't I actually forgot to mention this. Um, and this is so weird to me because, again, I was never the mom who, like, went forth with, I have to breastfeed my kid. But I brought my kid to, they called it, um, like, baby baby cafe or something like that. Every At the hospital? Day, I no, it was separate from the hospital. It was something that you could go and learn how to breastfeed. I went every Tuesday and I went every Thursday and I worked so hard on learning how to breastfeed my child. Wow. I feel like even though going into pregnancy, you weren't like, I got to breastfeed, I got to breastfeed. Some, I, from what you're saying, it sounds like yeah. something switched to where you well, were very I like, I've got to do it. I felt like I needed to, I owed it to Gia. I was like, right. killing me. Right. But, um, but I'm also a hundred percent certain that like, this is you guys, I'm telling you, I would have had postpartum anxiety had I kept breastfeeding. I literally was like my, I was released from 
every inhibition, as soon as I stopped, like, as soon as I took that out of my head, I was like, I no longer, like, I no longer have to be Gia's sole source of food. I'm free. It was insane. Yeah. Um, I felt that way too. That's exactly how I felt. But and I got those also, like, that is exactly how I felt. I am yeah. free. We can all be happy. Yeah. But so where I was going with that is I went to a lactation patient consultant and I'm almost like 99% sure she's the reason that I ended up getting mastitis because she wanted to work. You know how they do um, like nipple shields, like the plastic yeah. nipple shields. She wanted to work so hard on me not using a nipple shield anymore because she thought that was the correct way to feed. Like, let's work on, and instead of like, just like, let's feed my kid, let's get my kid fed, like nipple shields or not. She was so hell bent on getting that removed from my feeding schedule that that same day, literally that night I went home, I spiked a fever. I like was down for we oh. my parents. My parents had to take care of my kid because I thought I had the flu. I went to my OB yeah. and he was like, you have the flu here. Go, go, go get yourself. So I had to stay away from Gia because Gia was only four weeks old. So I literally like lived in my parents' um, downstairs bedroom and sweat out like, and had mastitis for two days because uh, the OB didn't see the red streak in my boob. That's awful. Yeah. So yeah, it's crazy. Like, like I, I said, like I, I had didn't a red any, streak. Huh? I don't think I had like the red streak. The red streak is like the biggest, like, I don't like, remember. Of I, could have. I, I mean, she I, I told me I had mastitis, but I don't think, maybe she just didn't mention like the red streak. Well, the red streak is like the, the, du- the duct that is yeah. the clogged duct. The inflammation. Yeah. I had that, but I don't, I, I felt like it was more like, well, regardless, it sucked. Yeah. No, like that's like the biggest tell that you have mastitis is that big red streak. I remember like after two days, I remember seeing it and mine was right here. I That's why I keep pointing right here. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I like literally like it's crazy how mu- how far you'll go for something you really never truly right believed in. It's that mama instinct that just kicks in, you know. Yeah. Uh, totally. Or you know, it, it doesn't. Not it doesn't always kick in. I know that you know. So it, you know, yeah. the mommy instinct doesn't. Or some people first. are just like you know have more. Uh, like less hormones, more wherewithal, more, and like can say, this is not working for me and my family. I'm not doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see, like comment below if you guys instantly stopped breastfeeding when you found out it wasn't working or, because I feel like everyone I've talked to that tried breastfeeding and didn't kind of had a point where they struggled for a couple weeks because they really wanted to try. But I'm curious if anyone got to a point on their first because like the second yeah. one, I, I, you know, but on their first, I wonder if anyone got to a point when they realized it wasn't working and they were like, I'm done. Um, well, and, then, and I also like to hear from people who just decided not to at all. Like ever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Ever. Just to say, hey, I'm going to be a formula mom. Like, yeah. Ooh, and which is okay. Yeah. I want to like, know. And I like, do have a few I, friends like that. I, I'd be curious to know what they, like what they thought. Bring them on the show. We want to talk to them. Um, yeah. Totally. Do you guys want to uh, get into our hot topic? Yes. Sure. yes. You ready? I'm not answering first this time. I always answer first. I'll answer uh, first because I have like that. T- that yeah, I got it. I feel like we're, we're we all. Well, no, I guess not. I feel like this is we're all kind of a little all over the place. I feel yeah. like we're too. Ex- yeah. So yeah, let's go. Let's start off well, in the middle. Alma, you go ahead and go. Okay, let me get the you time. Given the hot topic. Huh? Oh no. <laughs> do you guys want to know? Um, the hot topic. Do you want to know? Pulling up the time. Do you want to know? Do you want to know breastfeeding? In public. Let's yes or no. Yeah. Yes or this no. How do you feel? Go, Alma. Well, since I, I said, like, I'm the teeter-totter, I personally was not graceful or coordinated enough to do that in public. So for my personal choice, like I said, I struggled a lot. For me, it was a no. I don't mind when other people breastfeed in public. It doesn't bother me. Um, but the extremists, I know we said yes or no, but I'm going to explain myself. No, that's fine. We um, got two minutes. So you, yeah, you um, sure we have but, a pure yes or no on this one. Yeah. I, I like, I feel like we talked about this earlier because we had a little bit of the discussion, but like, I am totally for whatever people want to do. But I feel when people act rudely upon it and are like, extremists when it comes to nurse in public Aggressive. that's fine it does not bother me but when if i look in your direction and i'm not actually looking at you because this has happened and they go does this bother you and i'm like i'm not looking at you i'm sorry you're looking like, for, they're they're looking looking for, i'm not looking, looking at you yeah. yeah i'm not staring at you there's nothing uncomfortable for me but if you're gonna throw that at me don't 
Well, that says more about them than it does you. They're the ones. So, so, okay, then I, I'll go next, but I, cause I have a question for you on that. So mine is, I don't, I breastfed in public, uh, cup, just like, like two times, like, cause I didn't breastfeed. I did twice, like once or twice. And I do not care if you breastfeed in public or if you're at a get together at someone's house. Um, I just think there should be a universal rule that you just cover up. You like, you know, like it doesn't have to be a big wool blanket where, you know, the baby's hot, but just throw a light little, you know, blanket over you know, just to you know yourself. So, so, and it's not that like, it's disgusting, but just for like, for men, for little children, I just think it should be like a universal rule just to cover up. So, yeah. that, so do you not care? So I'm like, you, said, you, don't, you don't care if they're covered up or not. No. Okay. Lindsay, you're up. Um, I didn't breastfeed in public personally it's a no for me I don't care if other people do it in public um I would just say check your surroundings and see what kind of people you're gonna be around cover up yeah. if need be because at the end of the day they might feel a certain way and then that's somebody you, you see five times a week so. Right. So, okay. So when we chatted about it before, I felt like you were definitely more on the like. Oh, no, no. It. it wasn't about me. That's, see, that's, oh, no. I think I was. No, no, I know. Well, I, I was making like, it more about like, like I said, like, to, like, look around and see if you're going to make, feel someone make, unco- like, make them uncomfortable and then maybe like reassess. Like, that's I definitely kind of sat I with friends where they were about to nurse and they're like, do you want me to cover up? Like, they definitely asked. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, whatever you want to do is fine. See, like, if it's around, um, if you're around just me, I don't care. But if you're around, like, my husband and he might feel a little uncomfortable, then, I, like, you can do it in front of him, but I'd rather you put something over yourself. Well, and that's the thing why so I think it would be nice if there's a universal, like, rule. Yeah. Because, like, if some, if a friend were to ask me, and, and my friends, if it's just us at the house, it doesn't bother me. But if we're at, like, at a get together and cook out right. with husbands and wives and kids, and my friend was to say, yeah. hey, do you mind if I breastfeed and, like, not cover up? I mean, I wouldn't you know, I would feel awkward or bad saying, uh, oh, go ahead. But like, do you mind covering up? Because I don't want to offend anybody. So I it would be really nice if it was just a universal rule. If you were going yeah, to press yeah. around people. Just yeah, that's hard. hard. That's hard though. That's hard. I, but I do agree with Darcy in that because like we all did, were there, we all breastfed. And like, if I couldn't coordinate doing it in public, then I just chose to walk into another room with Gia. Um, yeah. But I, I do like, I, I read my audience. It may, if I if I knew I was going to make someone feel like a little uncomfortable, I I covered up. Yeah, that, but if you felt that you were going to make somebody uncomfortable, but there are people out there that find it care. to be such a natural thing well, that they don't care. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, Alma, like those people that have parades where they all decide to meet at a certain time and with no shirts on and they walk around feeding their infant. Like a, you know, that's just like, like I'm breastfeeding as one hundred percent natural. Nobody's. I literally had totally somebody like try to pick a fight with me for no reason where I happen to look their direction and they're like, does this bother you? I'm nursing. It's completely natural. And I'm like, yeah, dude, totally. I'm not looking at you. I think that at the end of the day, we respect everyone's personal decisions on how they choose to uh, approach this topic. Right. Um, you know, we all have our thoughts, but they're not strong to the point where it would be we disrespect or, or we don't feel like somebody that, that we love we would be like Absolutely. oh now we don't like you know like it's just our point of view yeah um, i don't want to fight anybody but like, no, right but with that being said that's that's everybody we went a minute over our hot topic so always always everyone, have a great night that. enjoy a cocktail and we'll see you guys next week bye bye, bye. bye.